Hey guys, welcome to Scuba Travel and Adventure. My name is Thomas. In this video, I will talk about uh, lubing your motorcycle chain and uh, what to use. Um, I, over the years that I have owned uh, my bikes, uh, the previous bike and this one here, the Africa Twin, I have tried uh, quite a few different uh, motorcycle lubes that you can buy either at a local Honda dealer or a motorcycle shop or even a regular hardware shop um, or store. My first uh, lube, because uh, I always had a Hondas, so I always was using the Motul uh, chain uh, lubricant. And then I tried the Makoff, which is for X-rings and uh, Z-rings and O-rings chain. Uh, so that, that one, um, that one was uh, pretty good and then I also used the generic brand uh, from a local hardware store and end of last year I decided to give it a go on uh, just the regular gear oil that you can purchase pretty much at any auto store or hardware store that carries auto parts. What I found out by using uh, all these different chain lubes uh, designed uh, strictly for your chain um, and I have been pretty um, religiously uh, lubricating my chain. Uh, I don't uh, take longer than I supposed to. I probably even do it sometimes beforehand. I find that the chain, um, after it gets exposed to some rain or whatever, uh, you notice some rust on the chain. But uh, after I give it a go on the just the regular gear oil, I never experienced that problem. And uh, I also find out that uh, that little nozzle here, it makes the life so much easier to lubricate the, the chain versus spraying it on your, um, on your chain with uh, either the straw or even just a regular spray. I will show you how I lubricate the chain. I'm not bashing any of those products. Uh, they're still good products. Uh, but I found that uh, this is way cheaper for once and for two keeps the chain um, way more oiled and it, uh, the chain actually does not have as much rust. And uh, I started doing a little bit more of uh, off-road riding. So there's a lot of potholes and water and uh, mud and um, even uh, through those conditions it performs actually quite well, but after pretty much every trip uh, or ride that I go uh, off-road, I will come home, wash the chain. Uh, I'm not gonna necessarily clean it. I will talk about it a little bit later, but I will wa pressure wash the bike and uh, the chain. And uh, as soon as it dries off, um, uh, I warm it up um, and I up reapply the lube. I, washed, I don't wash the chain before every application of, um, before every lubing. Uh, I wash it every maybe two or three um, lubes. Uh, I will give it a good scrape and um, then I reapply the lubricant. And another thing that I use, a lot of guys are talking WD-40, this and that, and uh, special uh, chain cleaners. I find out what works best for me is just a simple uh, kerosene from your local hardware store or camping store, wherever you can find it. Uh, this is just uh, Woods brand, again, here from uh, local uh, hardware store, Canadian Tire here in Canada. But, uh, I use this uh, to clean the chain. You gotta keep in mind when uh, you are uh, doing this uh, chain maintenance, first what you want to do, uh, you want to start the bike and uh, warm up the chain. Uh, you don't want to apply uh, the grease or anything on a cold chain. Even for cleaning, I will uh, pretty much, um, as soon as I start the job here, I will start off by uh, running the bike for a couple minutes and then um, I will start cleaning the chain. Uh, in this video, I will show you like uh, how I clean the sprockets and everything else. Uh, this way uh, you get a full idea how it is done if you are doing it for the first time. So let's get to it and uh, let's get dirty and clean up this uh, disgusting chain. I was riding a couple days ago uh, down in McLean Creek here in Alberta.
you want to do, you want to put the bike uh, on your center stand, make sure you don't have much weight in the butt, uh, just let it run and then let the chain warm up just for a couple minutes. Or you can take the bike for a spin, whatever you want. A few moments later. All right, so in order to, in order to give it a proper clean, uh, you want to take the front sprocket cover off uh, now as you have the chain warmed up and you use a 10 millimeter wrench for that. The gear shifter uh, that's mount on top here, but I find it it's much easier to pop it off and uh, then you can easily take it out. And so there's two, two, two bolts and they're five millimeter Allen keys. Uh, one on top here and one down at the bottom that hold the whole thing. I made a video a while back how to change the chain and sprockets. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can check it out. Actually, I put an end card at the end of the video if you're interested uh, to see how that procedure is done. So it's easier to remove that rod that's holding your shifter. And now you have a much easier access to your front sprocket. There's a little clip that holds the electrical wiring, so just uh, leave it there. And uh, there is that uh, sp uh, spacer uh, plate, so don't forget to put it back together. As you see, there's a little bit of gunk in here as well. But don't forget to put the bike in neutral. That's something I didn't do. As you see, there's a quite a bit of mud and grease in there. So make sure you scrape that off with a screwdriver or whatever. I put some cardboards usually underneath, so this way you get, you're catching all that debris and oil later on or a cleaning solution, whatever you be using. In my case, I am using kerosene. Yeah, always just in the front, you get the most debris for some reason. So I went on quite a few rides already this year and uh, I did quite a bit, pretty much every ride I did was in dirt and water. So now at this point, what I like to do, I like to get a rag and soak it in kerosene. That stuff is pretty cheap, so you can be pretty generous. Clean it from the surface first and soak it up. And I never recommend doing it uh, while your bike is running. That's a big no-no. You can lose your fingers. <laughs> see, as you see, the chain is almost like new. Well, <laughs> I changed it beginning of last year or last winter, I think. Whenever I made that video, I don't remember exactly when, but it's still a pretty new chain, uh, basically one season on it. And as, a, as I say, I'm pretty uh, fussy about getting that chain always in the top notch. Especially when you put in, like riding quite a bit in the rain and uh, we actually do. Um, another thing that I found quite useful is one of those brushes. Um, you can buy them, uh, I can buy them here at my local Honda dealer, uh, Rocky Mountain Power Sports in Calgary, or uh, you, I've seen them also on Amazon or eBay. It's a great little brush and it does the job uh, pretty well. So basically what you do, just put it on one side, hold it in one place and let the brush do the work to remove all the little debris. Yeah, I've been using those brushes for quite some time and I'm pretty impressed with that. There's also a different uh, chain cleaning tools that I've seen, but uh, those ones are quite reliable. Okay, and then you flip it over and do it on the bottom side as well. What I do, I put the brush this way 
and I'll put a rag on top of it this way I don't rip the gloves that easy when you're going back and forth on the chain. So I really recommend uh, doing the chain maintenance as, um, as it says in the manual. Uh, I believe it's uh, after every thousand uh, kilometers. Uh, if I always take the chain lube with me on my longer trips. This way when I set up uh, my campground or campsite or in the morning before I depart, usually I try to do it in the evening before I go to sleep in the tent. Uh, this way uh, all that ex excess lubricant is gonna drip off uh, and uh, it's good for another day of riding. That's uh, only if you're going on uh, multi-day adventures. So as you see, the chain looks mint. Uh, so little kerosene does, it great, does a great job and it's, uh, it doesn't dry like uh, WD-40 because uh, WD-40 makes stuff pretty dry too from uh, what I can find out. So we'll get a little bit more of kerosene and we'll clean up that sprocket here. So those sprockets again are pretty new, uh, just installed last year. The same thing will apply to the rear. I just go around and get all that leftover stuff, dirt and mud out of here and behind. So I just want to soak it up a little bit and then you get the other end of the brush. So when you apply that kerosene, you can let it sit for a little bit uh, to, to give it time to, so it go, works itself in between the uh, little creases and gaps. So also what you want to do, you want to lift the chain and clean up that, uh, those plastic runners for your chain. There's always mess on there as well. So there's one on top, one on the bottom. So since I started using the gear oil, you don't have so much of a um, thick buildup on any components here. I notice uh, everything stays uh, sort of more clean because uh, as soon as you get a little bit more of uh, the oil, the gear oil, it, it just simply drips out uh, from uh, if it's extra and that other stuff it hardens and uh, it, it becomes dry for some reason. Maybe that stays in between the o-rings as it's supposed to like because uh, that's the main uh, component of the, an idea of lubricating your chest, the new generation chains. But I find it that uh, just the regular lube uh, gear oil, it does an excellent job. Super clean. The sprocket's actually clean inside. Uh, so in the rear sprocket, same idea. You just wanna go where, uh, when there's no chain on top of it and clean as much as you can. So normally just to loop the chain with the gear oil, it takes me literally just a few minutes to put it on the center stand and uh, reapply the lube. Uh, when I do a more intense cleanup, like uh, today, to show you a procedure, it uh, takes a little bit longer to clean up and take the parts off, but it's still not a big deal. It's uh, under an hour, you should be pretty much done with it. All right, so now I want to grab a clean rag to dry it off, and then I will let it sit for a little bit to, to get rid of the excess uh, or remaining uh, kerosene. And we start to getting nice and shiny sprocket. So now the same idea, wipe your chain dry. So there we go. So now we'll let everything dry. And in the meanwhile, I will scrape off uh, this thing here and uh, that little plate and uh, the cover. And uh, then I'll come back and I'll show you how I applied the lube a few moments later so as you see the cover here is nice and shiny it's cleaned up and uh, now we are ready to apply the uh, gear oil so i'm using a 85w uh, 140 viscosity you want to find uh, the thicker stuff uh, that's for sure uh, i think that uh, somebody mentioned uh, they're using 65 uh, I find it that 65 uh, was a little bit too thin and I went uh, with the 85 
and it works. So when you're applying the lube, uh, you don't have to put the lube right in the middle of the chain. You want to put it on the edges, on both edges, uh, where the O-rings are pressed in between the links. So normally what I'll do, I'll just grab the bottle and I slowly squeeze it out and turn the, the wheel and apply the chain on all the links. So you want to do it from one side on both sides of the chain and then the other side of uh, side is the same idea just a gentle stream all right so once you do that you want to move over and apply it on top as well because now you have just the bottom side lubricated you want to put it a little bit on top as well and the other side same idea i'm trying to stay away from the camera so that's why it's kind of awkward for me to do that normally i would get in front of there and apply it that way but i want to make sure that you can see what's going on okay you want to turn the chain so at the end what i want to do i want to get a little bit of lubricant or gear oil put it in the rag and coat the chain put a thin coating on it. So that prevents the outside uh, from uh, rust. And you don't want too much, you just want to coat the chain. So, so as you see, it's not wet, but uh, there's always something that's gonna be on the surface. And this is it. So you have the nicely cleaned and lubed chain uh, with uh, probably one of the cheapest ways uh, uh, gear oil and uh, trust me it really does a great job so at this point all it's left is uh, putting together the front uh, sprocket cover so if you look on this uh, if you forgot how it goes actually if you notice uh, the one side is the flat side so you want to bring the flat side uh, right here uh, facing the engine case Yeah, double check uh, if you're not pinching any wires because there's uh, two, two electrical wires running through there. You don't want those uh, cut by the sprocket. There is a probably torque specification for that, but I never bother with the torque for this thing. It's plastic and it's got a metal uh, tubing inside for the screws, so pretty safe. Uh, I don't think you can break anything without the torque. Make sure those your kickstand wire is uh, right there, so that's, there's a switch in there, so that's one, one of those wires. I do remember the position of my shifter, so I know how far I should go. Once you got your gear shifter in place, don't forget your locking screw on top. So at the end, uh, after I have everything put together, what I like to do once in a while is to lubricate the center stand and the, and the side stand. And for that, I'm using just a heavy duty lubricant. Uh, just give a couple of squirts and uh, in uh, moving areas, because I'm not sure if yours does it, but I get the squeaking noises sometimes coming out of there. This way. All right, and the same idea on the, cent on the center stand. Let's give a couple squirts there. So this is it. Uh, this is a simple maintenance uh, that every rider should, with the chain drive, uh, should be performing uh, regularly as uh, per uh, maintenance manual. Th that will uh, preserve the lifespan of your chain. Half an hour of your time 
uh, just to lube it in without um, cleaning because cleaning is going to extend it. But uh, if you don't take the cover, front cover off uh, every time, even the cleaning it doesn't take that long. You can be done in like 40 minutes or less. Um, this did not a big job. So anyways, uh, if you found that video helpful and uh, you found value in it, uh, don't forget uh, to hit the like button. Uh, always comment down below and uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new here. And I do appreciate all my subscribers. I just uh, slightly over 500 subscribers right, right now. Thank you very much, uh, whoever subscribed to my channel. I really, really appreciate it. I'm looking forward always to uh, put the tips and tutorial on this channel. You also find here uh, videos from uh, my scuba diving and uh, other trips and adventures. So thank you for watching and see you next time. Cheers and ride safe.